Hey guys, Happy New Year's Eve for those of you who have already experienced it. Happy New Year. As I said yesterday after doing the top 10 worst movies of 2021 list, I was going to do a top 10 best. And admittedly, this list was actually a lot harder to do than the top 10 worst because I honestly couldn't find 10. I felt that to try to get it up to 10, there was a lot that we're getting in here by default and I didn't feel right doing that. So essentially I'm gonna give you a bunch of honorable mentions leading up to seven and then I'm gonna go from seven to one. So some films in that list would be Spider-Man No Way Home, The Suicide Squad, Wrath of Man, Nobody, Free Guy, Malignant. Yeah, I actually really like this movie. I thought it was fucking crazy, but it was fun. But now that we've got those out of the way, let's start talking about the top seven best movies of the year for me. So let's start off with number seven. Werewolves Within. I actually really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was quite witty. I thought it was quite funny. I liked the kind of the opposites of the normal horror film uh, trope that it had. It also got I Saw the Sign by Ace of Base in my head for so long that it actually became the number one song on my Spotify playlist. If you guys want a really fun kind of quirky horror film that is a horror film technically speaking but also a little bit outside of the box, I would definitely recommend seeing this. Number six, No Time to Die. This was the final film of the Daniel Craig James Bond era. And I gotta give this film credit for a lot of things. Not only did it have to precede the absolute garbage that was Spectre, but it also did its best to try and fix a lot of the issues as well as connect a lot of the issues from that film into this film. It's why it's two hours and 47 minutes long. It's trying so hard to make up for the mistakes of the previous film, while also sort of opening it up and kind of concluding the era of Daniel Craig's James Bond. Number five. Now this is actually one that I did not review because I only have just seen it in the last few days. Cop Shop. I feel that Joe Carnahan is one of my favorite underrated directors. This guy knows how to make a very decent action movie. Does he usually kind of land in the area of B-plus films? Yes. When he's done films like Smoking Aces and the A-Team, he's definitely done kind of not that great, but you can feel that there is a nugget of goodness in those kind of movies. And then he did films like The Grey, which I love, Stretch, which is very underrated. He did something called Boss Level this year. And Cop Shop, I feel, is kind of his reinterpretation of Smoking Aces, but much more linear, much more grounded, much more focused. That idea that you can't trust anyone in this film, everyone is a scumbag. I love the lead, I thought she did a fantastic job with her character. And the action and the practical effects, special effects team did a fantastic job in this film. Oh, there's so many intense moments because of everything coming together really well. So I would definitely suggest seeing that if you haven't already. Number four, another film coming in at the very last minute, The Last Duel. I actually wish I had seen this in theaters, but it was in theaters for such a short amount of time that I never got a chance. And it was a real cool return to form for Ridley Scott in terms of medieval films. I love the brutality in this film. There's so many good medieval fight scenes in this film, aside from the actual story, which I did enjoy because it is a retelling of the same kind of story three times from three people's different perspectives. Would I go and say that Ridley Scott was right about millennials and stupid people not going to see his movie in theaters? I don't know, he sounded like a bit of a dick. I really think that this is actually a very good film and it is definitely worth watching. Number three. Another medieval film, but this is definitely far off the mark of historical retelling, The Green Knight. I actually really like talking about this movie. From the visual representations of King Arthur's court and kind of the contradictions that the film has with the lore that we know about, through what the main character goes through in this film, as well as the kind of the opposites of what we know about honor and being a knight. Just purely from a visual perspective, this film is very fun to watch. Is it as weird as most A24 films are? Yes, but it does create conversation. It does create a window of Huh. Just kept on coming back to me. I kept on thinking about bits. I was watching essays about this movie for for a weeks afterwards. So that is why it's number three on my list. Number two. Number two is actually a surprise entry. This one I just watched last night and I would highly recommend it, especially for any who appreciate well-written screenplays and very intimate acting, very intimate performances. Mass. This film was written and directed by the stoner guy from Cabin in the Woods, and it essentially is about two parents that meet uh, 
and they have a history with each other, something that is a deep, dark history between the two of them, and they kind of come to blows verbally, as well as skate around the issue that is being talked about, and it is a victim slash instigator of a school shooting. Imagine a two hour long conversation where the people are essentially walking on broken glass the entire time and sidestepping very carefully wording themselves and then eventually delving into their emotions, their hate, their grief, their loss. It's so well done. For a first time director, this film was exceptionally well done. I feel that in terms of a movie going experience, you're not really getting much because it is just a very basic conversation, but there is good blocking. The performances are very intimate. The dialogue is fantastic because it doesn't give a lot of exposition. If anything, it gives nothing. This is a very realistic conversation of two groups of people who have met, talked, had history, and you are getting tidbits throughout as though it were a natural conversation. So if you haven't seen Mass, I would very much recommend it. Now for number one. Well, take it away, sound man. Dune is my number one film of the year. This was a film that I just kept coming back to over and over and over again. And every time I watched it in theaters, I got a better interpretation of everything. It got me into the books. It got me into the lore. Especially if you have read the first book, it is definitely far more engaging. It's far more in depth into the aspects of the book than some would interpret. Sure, it doesn't get everything, but it is a massive book and it actually squeezes in a lot more into the first film than most would anticipate. And it actually kind of makes me curious of how they're gonna do part two. Everything from Denis Villeneuve's direction to the cinematography, to Timothy Chalamet's performance, to just the entire world building lore visual design. Some of the best visual effects I've seen in a long time. Denis is essentially trying to beat himself from Blade Runner 2049, which very similar to this movie is another film that you just keep coming back and rewatching and enjoying more and more and more. Dune was a very reinvigorating breath of fresh air in terms of the world of science fiction after having kind of brain dead star wars movies for the last little while it was really great to come to a film it was really great to come and watch a film that really treated you with respect it kind of made you think outside the box and it didn't hold your hand but it still gave a very in-depth visual experience and a storytelling experience and it makes me so goddamn excited to watch part two. But anyways, guys, those were my top 10 sort of movies of 2021. Tell me what you guys thought were your top 10 best films of the year in the comments below, and let's have a conversation. And then finally, thank you to everyone who watched a video of mine this year. This was a long year in terms of my YouTube channel. It went by like a click though. I'm really happy that I got close to my goal. I was trying to reach 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year and I'm about 70 short. So I'm pretty happy for that. Let's try and get over to four, maybe even to five next year. Ooh. But in the end, I just want to thank everyone who's watched the video, left a comment, left a like, even the ones who are trolls. Because in the end, this is just what I like to do. Just like to talk about movies, TV shows, kind of give my thoughts, my opinions, and see what you guys think about them. We got a lot more in store for 2022. Gonna be doing updates to the Patreon page. Going to start watching Supernatural Season 6 very soon. Got my Witcher Season 2 review coming to you guys probably within the next few days, so keep an eye out for that. Some other video ideas that I hope to come to fruition. But until then, Happy New Year, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next year.